with the Conservative Vice Chair Paul Scully, who supports the Prime Minister's deal, and also the Labour MP Stephen Kinnock, who's been advocating a Norwegian-style agreement. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining okay. us. And we're, we're ten minutes away from a very important speech. What can she say that gives this decision to delay the vote any sense of sense, if you like? Yeah, I've heard no, um, nothing either way, as much as you have, frankly, so we'll see what she says. But I hope that if there is any sort of sense of delay, that there is some meat in the... Uh, uh, in, in the speech in order to give people the uh, the confidence to actually it's back the deal. difficult to see what that meet could is, be. It is, but I hope that, you know, she's got a summit in a couple of week, uh, couple of days' time to go to Brussels, that, that she's going to have something that actually will be um, something that will satisfy people to back the deal, because frankly, as, as far as I'm concerned, it's the only way in leaving in an orderly fashion, uh, but that satisfies Brussels as well, because there's no point just delaying uh, pushing this off into the long grass otherwise. We're just looking at the Commons. It's filling up as, as we speak. Just. Uh, let's say 10 minutes to go. Stephen Kinnock, wh how much authority does Theresa May have and how much has she got now in com comparison with a few hours ago before this decision? I mean, this is deeply humiliating for the government and for the country. She was faced with two humiliating options, either go ahead with the vote tomorrow and lose it or pull it today. She's humiliated in both cases. I think it's vital now that we table a motion of no confidence as quickly as possible. The authority it, it, and it, legitimacy it, it, is draining well, I, I, away. Right. You, the Labour Party, want to do that, but uh, no confidence in her or her party? I would suggest in the government, because in the end we need a government in place that can deliver on this. What I really hope then is the leadership of my own party will commit to a Norway plus option. So we change the political declaration, turn it into something meaningful rather than the truckload of fudge that we currently have. And I'm absolutely convinced that we have a majority in Parliament for a soft Brexit along those lines. So lots of ifs, lots of buts in there. But the first step is to make it clear to the House that the Prime Minister's and the government's legitimacy and authority is draining away before our eyes. The problem with that is that the Norway plus option that's been cited actually is similar to the deal but actually means that we don't end uh, freedom of movement of people, we still end up paying into the EU, so it's the worst deal. And actually, Stephen might want that, but his, uh, his leadership actually want the general election. That's all they're interested in. And actually, what that would end up doing, it risks giving Stephen his wife's nightmare, Jeremy Corbyn-led government. And, 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 with, and frankly, with that, nothing much else will change. The, the arithmetic of Parliament but do you will accept, barely change. As, as, as Stephen Kinnock says, that she has been humiliated, Theresa no, May? No, I don't think so at all. She's got a tough gig. She's undoubtedly got a tough gig because, as I say, the Labour Party want a general election. The Lib Dems and the SNP just want to pretend this has never happened. Uh, so it's the Conservative Party pretty well alone. Well, we, well, I spoke to Vince Cable others. and what he said was he, he wants another vote. Yeah, he, he says that, but actually, you know, he, every time he says that on Twitter, he puts hashtag exit from Brexit at the end of it. We know what his real motivation is for having a people's vote. Um, and so these guys just want to have that Bobby Ewing moment of just waking up and pretend nothing's ever happened. So actually it's the left of the Conservative Party to work, to chart our way through this. And we, we have our differences, undoubtedly. But at the end of the day, for me, the only way of getting an orderly uh, 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 way of leaving the EU is through a deal such as the one that the Prime Minister is negotiating I, now. For those who I don't cannot... know who Bobby Ewing was, of course, he came back from the dead. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> I can't see how you could not define this as the most humiliating moment for any British Prime Minister in modern political history. She has spent two years trying to sell this deal to the nation and now the big vote, supposed to be tomorrow, she's pulled it. Just on Norway and free movement of Labour, two key articles in the EEA agreement, Article 112 and 113, give an emergency break and a renegotiation. So to say I can feel that it feel sinking around the country as soon as you start doing articles. Article, as article, article But it's time to get to some facts and some reality We, we did here. the emergency break the, under David Cameron and, and look we, what happened. Frankly, we'd have actually ended up, I suspect, no, but this is a treaty. This is, this is a treaty-based right. And you're also out of the European Court of Justice. You've got rule-shaping uh, options through the EEA Joint Committee, EFTA Surveillance Authority. I know this is all a bit techy, but the reality is that we've got to find a deal that can demands a majority across both parties in the House of Commons. And there's always been a majority in the Commons for soft Brexit. Unfortunately, the Prime Minister has a tin ear on these are, things. Are we now a bit closer to a no deal? Uh, actually, I think we're a bit further away from no deal after the, the Dominic Grieve amendment last week and the Article 50 decision from the ECJ today. And that's actually what's made me more resolved. Well, nearer no Brexit is what uh, you're saying. Uh, you, you risk, both sides actually risk the diametric opposite position to the one that they hold in terms of the ideological leavers and the ideological remainers. Um, and so I think things have actually shifted towards the people that support no Brexit at all. And that's what's made me more resolved to vote for the deal. Stephen, it, in terms of the Labour leadership, 
Um, there will be those within the party who are saying, look, the government has never been weaker, the Prime Minister's authority has never been less, now's the time to pounce. Why isn't anybody saying that? Everybody seems to be very careful not to say that. Uh, in terms of the motion of no mm. confidence, well, I'll say it to you right now. I think we should table it as soon as possible, assuming that her statement now afternoon? is not going to deliver any big new groundbreaking news. Uh, we should table it uh, this afternoon or at the latest tomorrow morning. If we don't, the SNP will. So it's up to us to lead the line on this. We've said very clearly our, um, our party conference motion is we go through the gears. So first of all, motion of no confidence. If we can't get that because turkeys don't vote for Christmas, uh, then we must move all other options on the table. I think the first option should be Norway plus. Obviously, uh, there, is, there are others who are campaigning for a people's vote. OK, Stephen Kinnock, Paul Scully, thank you both very much. I'll let you go for a rather important yeah, House of Conversation. Thank you very much, thank both very of much. you.